This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. All right, folks. Hey, welcome to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl and Brittany S. I'm not going to give you her last name because she may go to jail after this show. You never know. Uh, this is Yak Radio. And you know what? Just like the promo says, who knows what we're going to talk about. It is sponsored by Southwest Point of Sale. If you got a little grocery store or liquor store and you're having trouble keeping cashiers, guess what? Try uh, self-checkout. Works. Let me tell you, I know tons of people have done it and they love it. 800-540-2149. Give Jeff and Mark a call. More years of experience. Plus, you get seven-day, 24-hour day service. and won't cost anything more than a cash register. San Diego Propane, if you're lucky enough to live in East County, Dave, only services East County, and I am one of the lucky ones. I'm telling you, I wasn't paying attention to my propane level. He called me up and goes, you better go outside and look at your tank. I said, okay, 5%. He was there that day. Fixed me right up. Did not run out. 619-460-1705. Give him a call. Last but not least, Automotive, West Escondido Auto and Trans, four locations. Not one, not two, not three, but four AAA Napa Auto Care ASC certified shops. Go to westautomotivegroup.com. All right, young lady, what have you done today? Well, you That's know, Brittany Sandoval, by the way, folks. Yeah. Dave, on my drive here, yes. stuck in traffic. I noticed. Uh, fire, unfortunately. It kind of gave me the chills. It's going to be a long summer and fall here in San Diego. Oh, it wasn't a Tesla? Uh, no, well, it might have been. Yeah, it was, might have it been. It was put yeah. out quickly. Thank you to the firemen out there. But um, on the drive over, I was thinking, you know, the first thing I wanted to do was thank you for this hour. Oh, thank my you pleasure. for this platform. Like, sincerely, mm-hmm. I know nothing's free in life. And, yes, it is. and you immediately. Friendship is free. Oh, you got to work on it. You got to work on it, and but we, friendship I is free. I think we do. I think we are the best of friends. When I asked for this hour, you didn't even hesitate. Nope. So I wanted to make sure to thank you and uh, thank the regu- regular listeners because the Yak Radio listeners, they know, hey, yeah. they know that they don't know <laughs> That's exactly what the topic's going to be. I was going to say. So thank you for uh, bringing us into your house or your garage or your car or whatever, you yeah. know, wherever you're listening. Absolutely. Uh, garage for me when I'm listening to you. That's usually working on my most car. Most people are, yes. believe it or not. And a shout out to the new listeners because I, because of the topic, um, there might be a few new listeners. Uh-huh. So in studio, we do have a guest, and um, she came on my radar late February. Uh, we share uh, at least two things, and I've only just met her a few minutes ago. We're both passionate, I'll tell you that. We mm-hmm. share passion. Um, and safety is very important um, as well in our short, our very brief discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to thank you as well for committing to this hour, and um, please welcome Amy mullins Boychak. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. All right, kids. So what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's funny because I had an agenda and it fell apart like a cheap suit. Oh, it always um, does. <laughs> after a month and a half of preparing. And, and you know, we and often... tons of emails. Tons of emails, tons of time. Maybe we can get into that later yeah. um, because, because it, it really did let me down. Yeah. Um, but Amy didn't. And so maybe we talk with uh, what you were doing at the board meeting when I saw well, you. Do a little preface, do a little backup. What is it? Th- what it was the main topic we're going to talk about today? Or maybe, is it is can go t- anywhere? I think that we also agree that maybe want we want to explore, but we want we don't want to be the only two to explore the restorative discipline approach okay. uh, that many school districts are adopting. Now explain what that is, and that's why I wanted other people to so be we're, here. And and again, this is our opinions, and we respect other opinions. Right? I'm trying to stick to to um facts. So that right. I can well, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and and I will tell you, so there are a variety of opinions out there. Right. And I'm a little familiar with Amy's opinion. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to actually bring in almost the opposite opinion so that we could have a balanced show. Sure. That I mean, because in the end, I wanted to hear both sides. It's and all about then, education. And then start finding common ground. Exactly. Because it seems like there are two just drastic sides and there's not much of a common ground um i think we say there's a common ground um but they're not parallel so um maybe the topic is restorative discipline policy i think truly it's we need to all start looking the same way to reach true safety okay so amy what is restorative oh my gosh (laughs) i I have something that's why i wanted the other half here to explain the other half didn't show up I, 
Uh, that's a great question because uh, nobody can explain it. See, that's this... where they get you. That's where they get you. Yes, dear. And that's why I wanted the expert. Okay. Of I wanted. Should I? say who? yeah go ahead okay. well so uh, who did you invite i invited san diego unified school district superintendent lamont jackson okay because he's at the top like he is and our- the reason you have to say that is because if we have an opinion and brendan will tell you if we have an print opinion on, on a topic and it's politically driven yeah. maybe and if you don't invite the other half then the FCC will take away your race car. Now, I, I will mention to you, Dave, uh, just, uh, for you, Yak Radio, you don't have to. That's oh, only, yeah. Out of all your shows, oh, really? Yak Radio is the only show where you don't have to do that. No, all your other shows, you have to. Yeah. But you know what? I, I still think it's the right thing to do. Well, yeah, I do. No, I agree. No, no, but I, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that is good and, to and, know. And the last thing I was going to quickly mention, too, is uh, sometimes there is that middle ground that uh, both sides can find. Yes. You just got to do a lot of weeding to get to Boy, it. Oh, man, oh, man. And I wanted to start weeding today, and okay. that's why I wanted the balance. Right. Whether we needed it or not, I am in every day, all day long, I I am at a middle school. Yes. And you're in the I'm middle see, of it. I'm right in the middle of it and it it needs to improve. I see both sides of the argument okay. and I I wanted to be truly honestly a mediator okay. and help to find a few changes that all sides can agree on. Now, okay. you're asking what it is and I'm sure a lot of listeners are as well. So, I was given this very small handbook as a teacher, no, most of this is my own research. Oh, I was going to say, that's Look, a lot of paper. That's my own research. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This is what I've been given so far. Okay. I think because th- there's Just enough to make you learning. dangerous? Is well, kinda. I think all parties are still trying to figure it out. But that may not be the safest approach. Right. So I'm going to read what it is, and then I really want to give Amy some time. Yeah, but you asked girl, her she's... a loaded question that we don't have the answer, which is why I asked our superintendent. I asked all seven board members. You and invited them all. I invited them all. I also asked, and I started asking a month and a half ago. I know. I didn't I ask know. last second. And then I decided to ask three of the San Diego Unified Restorative Justice experts. That's their job. Yeah. And um, apparently none of them could make it. Of course. And then, um, and I didn't hear back from them. And, and I will say, I asked my principal, and it is a awkward position for him, and he actually got back to me, and he actually took time to give so, me reasons okay. why. So I really appreciate that. So just as a backup, we will go to them with my recorder, and we will do live to tape. Then that way they don't have to take time out of their Sunday. I will go okay. during the week. <laughs> I will put a microphone in their face, and we will get a response. So maybe you need to ask them because you t- I'm suggested happy to do that. It. You suggested I'm that. I'm happy to do it. Two or three weeks ago when you yeah. dropped off the monkey, and I... I reached out again, and I didn't hear. I well, said, well, now it's like, oh, geez, he's coming to us. Well, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so let's... restorative communities. All right, so well, let's do this because it's. We haven't even defined it, and we're done with our first segment. You're driving me crazy. So let's take a quick <laughs> break because this is Yak Radio with Dave crazy, and, Amy. and Brittany. Yeah, she drives well. <laughs> right here on FM 961 AM 1178. The answer. <laughs> All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. This is Jack Radio with Dave Stahl, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. This segment is brought to you by South Bay Auto House, 310 Trousdale Drive in Chula Vista. Independent San Diego Mercedes-Benz Specialist, 619-422-6292. Southwest does an awesome, awesome. I mean, Southwest, South Bay Auto House does a phenomenal job especially if you have a Mercedes-Benz, uh, over 25 years' experience, have their own parts department, all their technicians are factory trained. They'll even buy your vehicle, and they sell pre-owned Mercedes as well. So go to South Bay Auto House with confidence that you're going to be taken care of like family. Gary and Rick are the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet. AutoHouseSouthBay.com, AutoHouseSouthBay.com. 619-422-8252. Bumper Doc Santee, go down and say hi to Angel. She is amazing. She keeps that place rolling just like a professional. 6711 Magnolia Street. Window tinting, uh, chipped windshields, uh, detailing, paintless dent repair, which is huge. 
Uh, they also do body work, uh, depending on how bad it is. They can do just about anything and everything. So that's SantiBumperDoc.com, 619-258-0433. All right, we got Brittany in the house, and she still hasn't figured out what we're talking about today. <laughs> but she's done one hell of a job. And you have a friend, Amy. Amy Mullins. All right, so you Hello. have something that the school district explains what we're talking about. Yes. So why don't you read it to us? Okay, so it's titled Restorative Discipline Policy, Building Anti-Racist and Restorative School Communities in San Diego Unified. Great. The reason I'm attending to this is because you asked our guest, yes. what is restorative justice? Right. Restorative communities are characterized by a mindset that promotes positive interactions. So it continues about Mm -hmm. interactions mm -hmm. um, builds on collectivist assets of students and school communities uh, it continues with communities student assets etc mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it is reducing the racial outcomes in exclusionary practices which have disproportionately impacted students of color black and latinx students in particular are more likely to be suspended expelled and arrested than their white peers even for the same behavior this is the very first paragraph of this okay. booklet that I've been given. So, okay. all right, all right, Amy, you got the floor. What is your thought pattern on this? Well, <clears throat> because my son was a victim of this policy, mm -hmm. um, I don't understand why the color of your skin is what they use to determine yeah. if you are held accountable for your actions. Right. Bingo. <laughs> and that's it. It's over. I mean, what more do we need to talk about? When I was a kid, if we got into a scuffle in the in the, had nothing to do with color, right? Had and nothing to do with ethnicity, or if I can't say that word. It had everything to do with I was mad at you and you were mad at me. We get into it, we got over with it, and it was all fine. This policy in itself is um, discriminatory. It's, yes, it's endangering and it's negligent. Um, it has nothing to do with equity or okay. fairness right mm -hmm. it's it's just about race and right. in, in my situation i don't care what color your skin is when you put hands on my kid we're going to have some problems exactly and what it's 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 like didn't you guys look back 20 50 30 40 50 years ago when racism was such a terrible problem and what because we haven't had it now you're going to bring it back because that's what they're teaching your kids when they bring this stuff up is it's okay to be racist. No, it's not. Well, they're actually forcing these kids to yes. look at color. Um, my son has never looked at color ever in his life. His heart is what guides him, not his eyes. Exactly. And um, and that's because of you and your husband. Yes. Seriously. Yes. That's where it starts. Because let's face it, in the South, there were some parents they would tell their kids, if you see a black guy coming down the road, if you have a chance to thump him with a club, you would. But that's what they were taught. We don't do that today. And I don't understand why the school <coughs> feels it's so important to raise your children. <laughs> they want to take your rights away. That's I, why. I just leave me alone. Leave my kids alone. Now, if I'm doing something terrible and you find out about it that's one thing because there are some parents out there that should not have kids yep okay we all know that yep. but keep your nose out of my business teach me and nobody's talking about where our kids are you know from math and english and nobody's talking about that it's like they what did one uh, governor said he says well we're no worse than anybody else what well now there's a logical concept so this has come out. Go ahead. You nope, got your... finish your thought. No, I'm just saying. So this is a new guide. Yes, it's a different. So I'm still really trying to understand this. I think our principals are trying to understand it. There needs to be a lot more training. Um, so this, uh, this approach is three tiers. So if a student does something wrong, or excuse me, I don't even know the terminology. I'm allowed to use it. Okay, he if acts up. It's an incident. He acts okay. up. He throws a, I'm just going to, let's do a scenario. So I throw an eraser at the teacher. All right. So that is probably <laughs> disruption. So there are three levels. Okay. I'm looking at level one, disruption. 
Oh, you have. Oh, they have a. a so they order. have levels. So oh, what nice. I've learned uh-huh. is, um, um, in the fall of 2020, I believe they they came together. They have these three or four levels, and then that's what was pushed out to us. I received this, I think, last May. Okay. And so, okay, so disruption is a level one. Um, and so my restorative response matrix says that I should check in with the student. I should redirect them. I should teach them mindfulness strategies. Um, I should so do some restorative conferencing, um, talk to them about social stories um, and, and breathing techniques. And so it gives us wait, a wait, list wait, like wait, that. Wait, 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 excuse me. Where, where in your education that you became a teacher that you were taught this cute little list you have over here so a part of why cute little list what was it was handed out to me last night i'm sure it was so part of why i really wanted to have somebody come in for the balance is for that person to see we all need more training clarity and consistency no you don't need more training amy's got her finger up i'm gonna be quiet it's not your job to be a psychologist okay it is so much more on our plate now that's a teacher amy or a behavior therapist or a be thank you very much but also i find it interesting that you got this in may when this policy was uh, um adopted october 27th 2020 2020 yes well was that at a friday was that a fr- zoom school friday night at 9 30 right p.m right because expulsions were at an all-time high at that point you know in zoom school well uh, she's being sarcastic <laughs> i think she's being sarcastic but that's okay so <laughs> go ahead so uh you i was quiet for like three whole minutes hey, you, you almost um, made it a half you hour. said why have this so i went to the district site and according to the district and anybody can look at this um Mm -hmm. it has like the um six most frequent questions about restorative practice number six why is why is the need for restorative justice important i think you asked that a few minutes ago like why do we need this Mm -hmm. so according to them that's a paragraph here again why i wanted someone to talk to us with their own you know but we're not going to make that's not going to happen today. the school to prison pipeline is a metaphor used to describe the increasing patterns of contact students have with the juvenile and adult criminal justice systems as a result of the recent practices implemented by educational institutions specifically zero tolerance policies and the use of police in the schools through restorative practices we can utilize tools to hold students accountable for their actions while keeping them in school and out of the school to prison pipeline that to me sounds like their reason that they needed to zero tolerance dangerous go ahead dear so in 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 my particular situation there's been um zero accountability zero justice and um there have been multiple incidents with the same student on the school campus and every incident is being um downplayed and tried to be hidden and brushed under the rug so that they don't have to necessarily deal with it or face it or report it because there's a lot of paperwork that goes with that but also when you downplay and hide incidents then it makes people think that restorative discipline policy is working and that is not how this is working at all no what would justice look like you say there hasn't been justice yeah it, for someone in your who, situation who what do you what started. would you like to see happen to make this right uh, well, justice would have been holding the offender accountable. There has not been an apology letter. There was a two-day suspension, which is a slap on the wrist for this particular student. Um, this student um, enjoys not being at school. Oh, of course. <clears throat> um, there has been no school assembly. This, this assault on my son happened in front of the whole entire lunch quad, so mm-hmm. everybody saw blood coming out of my son's mouth. Mm-hmm. And his face turning red, you know, uh, um, and this wasn't addressed with any of the students saying, hey, this is a, a behavior that we do not allow. We right. do not tolerate this. We don't handle our anger this way or, you know, whatever. This was also a completely unprovoked assault. Um, my son had never had any interaction with this student prior before. Um, so to know that there's been zero disciplinary action or any um Oh, how can I say this? Well, I think no disciplinary action whatsoever, which tells the student body, do whatever you want to do. Well, yes. And Nothing's going to happen. All of the students are watching this sure. and, and saying, well, A, I can get away with that. Right. But also, B, 
holy cow, nothing happened to that person, they could do that to me too. Right. Because I mean, now when your kid goes to school, you don't know what condition he's going to come in when he comes back. I don't even know if he's going to make it out at the end of the day. See, that's what I'm saying. And just by us talking about it, you know, he's not listening and I'm sure his peers aren't listening to this show, but they can say, hey, he was talking about, yeah. and then, then there's that revenge thing that kicks in. Right. Ooh. And, and my son is being forced to have to face his offender well, if, every single day. Well, I got somebody sitting right across from me that had a situation with a student that had nothing done to that student. And this, she has to look at the student every day. Yeah. Right. And, and, and she's a teacher. Yes. And be worried about being threatened again or escalating even worse. Yeah. Well, so, and you want to make it quiet. Let's not escalate it. Let's go. Let's keep it. But nobody learns from that. Right. Nobody, it was so funny. It, I don't know, I'll let you talk in a sec. I was talking to a bunch of guys my age, okay, dirt. <laughs> and I said, How many of you got the paddle in school? <laughs> Every one of them raised their hand. Right. And it was actually the prowlers. And their average age is 76, I think. <laughs> so I said, Out of the teachers that paddled your butt, how many of them did it and you didn't deserve it? Not one hand went up. <laughs> But it was discipline. You had, and it was Mr. Johnson. It was Mr. Roberts. It was Mrs. Jones. It was, you know, you had respect because if not, you're either going to get it in the principal's office or your mom and dad are going to tear you a new one. That's all gone. All gone. Well, all gone. I, I did read la uh, a couple months ago that a Missouri school board yeah. had decided to allow paddling again. That's what I heard. I heard Missouri. Ah, that's shocking. Yeah. That's I know. totally I, shocking. I don't, I the don't parents think, have to sign off on it. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I don't think it's going to last very long in the school board. But but I you mean, know what? It's quite it interesting. only takes one or two. You know, if a kid that's rowdy, and everybody knows he's rowdy, and we all had him in our high schools, right? That one kid that was always rowdy, and all of a sudden he gets bent over and paddled, doesn't even have to be in public, just the fact that he gets bent over and paddled, everybody else is going to say, oh, maybe we better think twice about that. I mean, go ahead. Well, because there's no accountability with this um, that's the policy, problem. Yeah. then you also make the offenders victims also right because at any point somebody could retaliate against them oh and absolutely say, hey then it's a free-for-all yes and then we have a riot how in the world i almost said something i wasn't gonna say <laughs> let's take a quick break we come back there's a whole lot more because Brittany is her head's gotten three times it's larger. exploding but it's I'm, exploding. I'm biting my tongue. but you're doing well steve she's hanging in there brother everything's going good fm 96 1 name 1170 the answer All right, folks, welcome back. You're listening to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl and Brittany, FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Signal is brought to you by San Diego Gear and Axle. Anything under your car, they can take care of it. Two-wheel, four-wheel, all-wheel. It's all about the drivetrain. Go to sdgearaxle.com. All right, Brittany's in the house today. He's got a pretty interesting uh, Passionate. topic. And, 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 and Amy's with us as well. And Amy had a situation with her son. Uh, you know, the old, you know, out there on the, in the quad and some knucklehead decided he wanted to thump her kid. And, and now the school's all in a panic because we all have to, you know, take a deep breath and put our finger and thumb together and kumbaya off for a little bit, but no repercussions. Okay. That, I have to speak up now. Yes, you can. Okay. I, and I apologize for the first segment. It was just such a loaded question. What is restorative justice? Well, somebody so, needs to know. I'd yeah. I wanted to respond to something you said, and it's uh, funny that it's coming from me. Um, this is good. We're, we're moving closer to the center. You had hoped for an apology letter and school-wide assembly to address it. So I think if we had had the other half here, they might say that is more of the restorative approach. approach. And, I'm, you know, I'm, I've got 11 more years if I can maintain my job, and um, I want this to work because – it's what I show up to every day. Sure. So it does seem like there, there's the zero tolerance seems to have been absolutely forgotten, labeled racist, da, 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 da. I think ideally in my world, both would apply. They would be simultaneous where it would feel like there's more accountability, but also why not try to, 
oh God, we can't call them um, victims. I forgot the new vocabulary words, but you um, can call them vic- well, victims. Well, and the, the perpetrator, or the the offender, right? Um, oh. It would be nice to have these approaches and talk to the offender and and have them realize how their actions have potentially a long lasting effect. I just wish the two policies, the zero tolerance and that was, I guess, coupled with this approach. Or you could marry both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Right? A three strike um, rule, something that you can't just keep offending and offending and offending and offending because these do not accumulate on you. They are a clean slate every single incident. Exactly. And I think part of this is if somebody attacks let's just say your son, Mm -hmm. then that kid needs to go sit down with somebody, a psychologist or a therapist, and go through a full battery to find out what's going on with this kid. I personally don't want to wait for the second beating and the third beating because you don't know if he's going to make it to the fourth beating. You need to nip it in the bud immediately. And if you pull a kid in, and these psychologists are supposed to be smarter than you and I. That's another right. story. Okay. <laughs> then they need to put sign off. There's nothing wrong with this kid. It was just an incident. He's going to be fine. And he better oh, not. Yeah. But then if he goes back with a second attempt, then you bring that psychologist in. See, there's no repercussions for anything. Well, and the parents should be held accountable. Too. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I was hoping to be able to ask somebody, because you're right, like this level one, it just seems I have to go through this whole list and they can just keep doing it and do it. So what is a true, I want to look a board member or Lamont in the eyes and say, that what can I do, say, not do, that will truly be a deterrent? Right. Because- but, he, but you know what he's going to tell you? Those are guidelines. Breathing exercises. You know what you remind me of? That reminds me of my TV takes a dump and I have to go through the troubleshooting. You know, when the power doesn't come on, look, see if it's plugged in. If it's, it's, that's kind of the same thing. Well, the way, the way this policy is currently written and the way it stands now is more ideal and applicable for elementary school maybe up to fifth grade. And then there needs to be a different right. level of policy for middle yes. school and a different level policy for high school. Without a shadow of a because doubt. Because these kids these days, they don't they don't want to sit and listen to a talking circle. They don't want to do breathing no. exercises. Like no. they want their 15 seconds of fame on social media. Right, right. So and, and, and back up that plan with statistics <laughs> that it works. Right, right. Show me how many kids that you've utilized this program that have been successful and stopped child violence. Show it to me. Right. It's easy. It's on the internet. Yeah. um, In the end, I'm hoping that there can be some way to have like a group of a bipartisan panel come together and agree on how to collect data on the effectiveness and how to interpret it correctly. Because I've read some study, some studies, and I just think those studies came to the wrong conclusion. Yes, and there was also another study out of um, San Francisco State University that they um, inflated the numbers and um, used some fuzzy sure. statistics to talk about how disproportionate it is racially. Right. And from a, see, three things I hate, lie, cheat, and steal. Somebody inflates numbers like that, they should lose their job. Agreed. Without even a hiccup. They should lose their job, their pension. They should be done, finished. It only has to happen once or twice. And you won't see people doing stupid stuff like that. Our whole country has become no no responsibility and no no end result. There's no punishment. You can, you can lie. You can cheat. You can steal. It's okay. You know, it is what it is. You can't. And our kids are learning this. Right. That whether the, I mean, the parents do their very best, but when the kid goes out and he sees his buddy get away with it or he sees his teacher get away with it, you know, then he's going to think, well, wait a minute. Well, dealing with this um, particular situation and dealing with the district, the school, um, the restorative justice department, whatever, and they've sent me on this wild goose chase and they've, literally talked in circles. Um, I have uh, over 150 pages of correspondence and documentation, um, and I have had zero resolution since January. 
I wonder if you would go on KUSI TV. I would love to. You know what I'm thinking there? Unfortunately, when I leave here, I'm driving it for a week. But I would love to have you put together a one-page, and I'll send it to Tommy at KUSI, and I'm sure they'll give you airtime. Yeah, I would totally do it. And let me... T- I'll go on CNN. I don't care. Yeah. Put, this this policy is um, is not safe. Your kids are not safe at right. school when you drop them off under this policy. Right. They are not safe. Right. It does not matter what color, what religion, what anything, your kids are Aren't not safe. safe. And that's the bottom line. Well, it's no different than they want to take police officers and put social workers and have the social workers go out to a, you know, a family disturbance or uh, and then see what they can do. Well, then what's going to happen when the first social worker gets shot? Well, under this policy, um, there are only five behaviors that give you a mandatory recommendation for expulsion, but they don't even have to expel you. They, it's just mandatory. And one of those is sexual assault, mm-hmm. um, brandishing a firearm, brandishing a knife, um, bringing an explosive and selling drugs. Those are the only five behaviors that give a mandatory recommendation for expulsion. It's not a guaranteed expulsion. I was going to say, because what about that kid that went to do two different schools, molested two different girls, still in school? Right, right. I think it's fear, Brittany. Uh, Well, uh, fear what? It's fear. Upper school administrators are scared to death. They don't want to get sued. Yeah, um, there's a really good article I recommend if anyone is concerned about this. It's called Restorative Justice is Unfair to Students Who Want to Learn. And uh, it was in the American Thinker, September 1st, 2020. And it talks about the push for this. Um, <sighs> I'm trying not to lose my job. You're doing fine. You're doing it's fine. just, I'm trying. <clears throat> There's a push for it because of the presumption of discrimination and racism among educators, or like that educators are and the policies are. So to speak out against that, set yourself up for being canceled. Exactly. And um, I think that is a big reason why people aren't speaking up. And unfortunately, they're going to start speaking up once their child has become a victim. And the victim tally is... Mm-hmm. becoming way too right. big too fast and people need to realize if somebody says something bad about you on social media that's not the end of the world <laughs> hello true. you're yeah. not gonna blow up and never come back let them talk you know tr- you know think a kid rock every time somebody comes after you you know you're bigger and better than that people that talk crap about you or try to cancel you they're the weak ones because they want you to follow in their footsteps, which you don't happen to believe, right? I mean, if you don't believe it, you don't believe it. But we got to stop screwing around and put the kids first. And it's all about safety. It's one of the very yes. first things I said when I went on my long tangent. Yes. But we both want what's safe for, for our the, students exactly. and our staff, our community. I had no idea this policy existed um, because my son does not get in trouble. He's, he's just good there kid. to be a good kid. He, yeah. he, he wants to learn. He wants to do what he needs to do, and that's yeah. it, right? Um, but I have run across so many teachers that did not even know that this policy was put in place, and they were confused as to why these kids were back in their class a day later or yeah. two days later what or, you, you know, doing whatever. here? Yeah, so um, they, <laughs> they did not even roll this out properly. Yeah, I um, think that's huge. Yeah. I, I really hope that in the end when the people – listen to this or get wind of it that they realize there needs to be more and there needs to be consistency on the approach because it's just kind of been pushed out and left for each school to interpret Mm -hmm. so there's a lack of consistency a huge lack of training and then um you had mentioned a psychiatrist should be talking to the student not the teachers yes not the vice principals which have a new name i'm sorry i can't remember um but the time that it takes to restore these students, it takes a long time. It's another article that I read about is the time that it takes for restorative justice to really start working. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could take weeks to years. Well, when I'm spending all that time, I'm not teaching. Right. Right. It's taking away from the teaching. So it's not your 
job. Yeah. So on the horizon, um, the union recently has asked, they're at the bargaining table, and two little paragraphs that were nice to see was that they're asking for um, more training, and I believe some more experts on campus, maybe. Well, I know. the problem with that is, um, in my particular situation, the principal has to put that in his budget to yeah. ask for the money to be able to have these resources. So right now, they don't even have the availability to pretend to implement this policy. Right. Yeah. I wish that it had just been parallel with what was already in there, the zero tolerance policy, and then let's try these approaches along the way. Right. That's what I had. Well, they could have right. been tips. And you should be able to, to, to you know, because you guys all know your students. If you got one that's coming, you know, coming a little bit apart at the seams, then you should recognize it, call somebody, and have them come get this child and take them someplace, sat and sit. I mean, it's not like we're having 12 a day. Well, let me go back to what you guys said about 10 minutes ago, is when you see another student and it looks like they get away with it, mm -hmm. then that many more people. Well, of and, course. and I believe at some of the sites, it has escalated to the point where we, you know, you can't send all the students to those counselors because it, it. Yeah, but how many, okay, it, 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 let's say, just pick a day, how many unruly kids do you have in your school? I'm not going to speak to my particular. Well, no, I mean, I mean, um, it has an estimation. More than two? Yes. Okay. Then that's a problem. And that's where this probably isn't going to work unless there's some kind of repercussion. A deterrent of some yes. sort. And it's yeah, not right. expelling your kid. They'll just go home and play video games or they'll go whatever. They need to have something else. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. Well, it, it, yeah, and so uh, there used to be the alternative schools, the chaparrales yes. and that. And right. So Riley. I, yes, and Riley. And uh, sorry, I grew up at Grossmont Union District. Or, um, so maybe reopen those schools, call it a restorative justice school. Right. And, and what that does is it... it, it gets them to places it gives them the time that really needs to develop this and teachers Experts. that do this for a living yes and teachers can work on teaching again right. take the time for teaching yes because in in my particular situation that's been my um my request this whole time was to get her to get this offender the resources that they need right because to help them yes to help them because this policy is failing my son's offender also well yeah because both and no offense but wouldn't this be something the unions could finance and make a positive effect mm -hmm. on teaching let's take a break you're listening to <laughs> don't you hate it yak radio with dave Stahl <laughs> and Brittany on fm 961 am 1178 the answer Folks, hey, welcome back. You're listening to Yak Radio with Dave Stahl, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. That's the Brit. She's in the house. Breathing exercises. She, boy, you should see her over here doing push-ups. and Our talking circle. Talking circle. <laughs> Restore. We want to thank circle. John's Automotive Import Repair, 7447 University Avenue, Napa Auto Care, ASC certified, AAA approved, three years, 36,000 mile warranty, career, clear across the continental United States. We're talking about a topic that none of you probably know anything about. And that's the way the government likes it. So, oh my God. yes, dear. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did. Uh, I, right before we went into commercial break, I had mentioned the alternative schools. Mm -hmm. If that is quickly dismayed because that's going to take too long or too much money to open them. A dear friend of mine, we were talking about this. She had suge suggested then online classes because we know how to Zoom. Right. We were forced to do it sure. quickly. Sure. So I wanted to get that out there. I, I really, really want some solutions. It's, so. it's very true. Yes. So um, COVID that. proved that c school can be done anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. So maybe yeah. that could happen. And the, the biggest problem is, you know, you have to you have to get both sides in a room that's what I was trying. To I know, do. but 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 don't give up. You get both sides in the room and have a intelligent conversation. Mm. The right tells them what why they believe what they believe, the left believes what you believe, and you figure out a way to compromise. Well, I feel honestly in this situation that it, it shouldn't even be political, it shouldn't be no. right or left. It's safety. just safety. safety. Your kids safety, plain Perfect. and simple. Right. I don't care what political side of the fence you sit on. Yeah. 
And that's the hardest thing for them to accept is just flat out, black and white, here's what we want to do. We want to save our kids. Right. Well, and this um, policy, the way they have it, it pretends that um, your students all belong to the same kind of tribe. Like we all think the same, we all feel the same, and that's not the way this works. You have so many different ways of living and outlooks and cultures that you're trying to combine all of this into, right? right. Um, and my my situation, we fall in this loophole of gray area because there was no friend to begin with. There was no interaction. There is no relationship to restore. It was a completely unprovoked right. assault. Just like what's going on around the United States right now. Yes. These unprovoked, whack them in the back of the head, yes. push them onto the train tracks. There are some mentally disturbed people. That's why this child should be taken in and evaluated. Yes. And, and at the end of the evaluation with the parents there, you may not like what I'm going to tell you, but the, this little guy needs help. Right. Whether it's therapy, whether it's drugs, whatever the case may be, your child needs help and we need to monitor your child. And if it means he's got to go to a different school, then he goes to a different school. How does that help? I'm sorry. Go well, because you can't school. just let him go. But it, won't it just start at the new school from the... No, no, no. This is a school... Oh, sp- like an alter- oh, yeah, like the alternative Specifically designed... Yeah. Specifically designed For school. children that have Got issues. It. And honestly, that is the whole premise of the restorative policy, yes. right? You put them in a situation where they can be restored right. back into the community yes. right. once they receive the help that exactly. they need. But so. it's right now how it's rolled out. That's the teacher's yes. responsibility. And then after they go through a long list, then, then it becomes yeah, the next it, staff member. But it shouldn't be a super then, long list. I mean, if you have a kid that acts out once, okay, give him twice, then then he moves then he moves to another level nope no 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 i'm saying but that because you don't you don't get paid enough and you don't have enough time to teach 30 kids and have to deal with a one a one kid that's going to take up all your time and that's what amy's saying as well as it's a, it, it does a disservice to, move, to both parties yes but, but see then that's where the money comes in because the school district says oh well we don't have any money you get more money per student than any other state in the United States. If you can't budget your money any better than that, then we need to get somebody in there that knows how to budget money. And we'll get some <laughs> housewives to come in, and they will straighten this place out. <laughs> Guaranteed. And they will come up with a thousand different excuses why it can't work. And it's not acceptable. And it's got to take people like you, Amy. I mean, because I know you're not going to let this thing lie. I am not. Until it's done. Because you're doing it for... And your kids need to know why you're fighting the fight. Well, and my my son also sees that I am standing up for him. Right. Because the people that are supposed to are refusing to. Exactly. And you just need to get, knock on as many doors and, and yell at enough people. Yes, dear. You can always finish your thought, Dave. I always think okay. everything is finished. So for, I want to <laughs> say for parents and guardians out there, um, and, and Amy, I'm not sure if you know that there's a school site equity team. No. And that is supposed to be staff, students, and parents, I believe. I did somewhere in all this paperwork, but I wrote it down just to put that out there where uh-huh. I saw parents can be a part of the school site equity team. And I believe that they look at, I've read through so much, but I think they look at, data regarding the effectiveness or data as suspensions or something it's something that parents and guardians might want to look into a school site equity team okay and then i was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about your facebook page oh sure (laughs) um i have a facebook page it is uh, sd parents for safety um and it is just to discuss restorative discipline policy Mm -hmm. um incidents that happen in your school how the school administration is handling it or how they are not handling it um and i would love to get feedback ideas of of people that would like to make some changes to restorative Mm. discipline i'm not saying that i I don't agree with the premise i do but we we need to figure out better ways that's only partial right but that's the way the government works. They never think things all the way out to the end to see what the end result's going to be. They always go a foot and go, oh, this sounds like a good idea. Well, maybe we look a little bit farther, you're going to fall off a cliff. Right. But, but you know, and, and the parents, like I said, 
that how many times have you heard of a child doing something horrific and they interview the parents yeah he's had problems his whole life right wait a minute right what do you mean he's had problems his whole life and you let him go through life because you can't i mean if you can't control him there's doctors out there that can yes i it just that's the part that just goes really i just don't get it but it's well true. but you got it but see you know this came a long time uh, i know Brittany's not she's a little bit depressed because she couldn't get the other side because it's all about results i wanted res- it has nothing to do Come about on. radio it was all about results getting this getting the other side's opinion not that we have to agree or disagree nor do they have to agree or disagree with the other side but at least let's have an intelligent conversation for the kids safety i mean that's it in a nutshell a hundred percent we're not asking you to write a check we're asking you to sit down and have a dialogue because you know what maybe you don't have kids Maybe you're not in the classroom. Maybe you don't see what's going on. Right. You know what I mean? So you need to, to, before you make a decision and write up a dossier like that, you've got to talk to a lot of people. And I think they're called teachers. Well, they wanted to um, get a hypothesis. That, that's what I was told, um, that this is they need a hypothesis. <laughs> so they are literally experimenting yeah. on our students and our kids without our permission or consent. Let me know if they come out with a cattle prod. <laughs> I mean, you know, anything can come out of the woodwork. You know, it's like, well, let's just zap that little guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, safety plans don't work. No. Um, yeah. Colorado Indivi- Shooter was a prime example of that. Well, that's a whole other topic is Andrew. <laughs> That's Andrew, another hour. Andrew Pollock, you knew why Meadow died. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, and he had his opinion Did on- Did you read the book? No, uh, excerpts from, and the gentleman I teach with has been talking about this book for a year, and I had- You want to borrow it? Sure. I do have it. Okay. Um, I wanted to reach out to him. I did last second, like last night, because I kept reaching out to everyone else because I was hoping that in his efforts, maybe there, he has been a part of some changes to the plan and now it's working better and Uh, our district could learn from their district. I thought about reaching out to him too. (laughs) I did, but it was last second because I just kept hoping the 14 other people would show up. And so it took a while to get rejected by 14 people. Yeah, yeah. Um, You did it well though. if, If they, um... Maybe they've learned and we can learn from them instead of experimenting. I agree. On our kids. I agree. All right. So let's do this. Let's next weekend is the Automotive Museum Radio, but the following uh, weekend. Oh, no, it's not. We have Patrick Henry High School coming in. And then. Is that the first? Oh, no, that's the 30th. Yeah. Okay. And so then the, you have the automotive. Thank mm-hmm. you. What would I do without you? All right, Amy, it's been a blast having you on. Thank you for having me. Don't give this up. We will uh, see if we can not get a little verbiage on KUSI. Facebook page again? SD Parents for Safety. Yeah, don't just the sit four on four is a number. Yes. And don't just sit on your butt. Get involved. They're, they're your kids first. And they're watching us. That's right. Oh, Lord, how are they ever? FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.